Alright, welcome back to this let's play of Into the Breach, episode 8, if my if my count is correct. We in the previous episode we just defeated the Vec flawlessly on the Tundra, and now the corporate HQ is under attack. Um before I jump in there. Um, I realized what I haven't done recently is gone and look at, looked at the achievement list. Now, in most games, I don't really care much about achievements. You know, they're a nice little pat on the head saying, well done. But, in this game, every achievement you do gives you a coin which you can spend to unlock future squads. So, whether we save the Earth successfully or fail again in this game, having those coins available will be useful to get a different squad for the next game. So I'm just going to have a quick look at what, what the achievements available are. So, Island Challenges, Perfect Island, we did that previously. Defenders, we did that previously as well. Um, Untouchable, Finish Copper Island without taking mech damage. Failed on current island. Backup batteries. Earn or buy a 10 grid panel on a single copper island. Well, we're definitely not going to do that on this island. We've got two. Uh, earn nine reputation from missions on a single copper island. Well, we've got five. Those both seem really hard. How do you get... Well, I guess you spend all your rep on power. You spend all your rep on power and get a bunch of power bonuses. Yeah, I guess you can do that. Get 10. Nine, earn uh, nine rep. That's that's gonna be hard because it looks like typically five or six seems to be the well, maybe including the corporate six six to eight, but so maybe nine is doable with a, with an island with nice rep rewards. Pilot challenges have a pilot reach maximum level. Yes, have three pilots at max level simultaneously. Well, if we survive long enough, that should happen. Unlock six additional pilots. That just is just gonna take time. Okay, two alphas. Have an individual pilot fight the final battle three times across multiple games. Oh, we progress. We haven't even seen the final battle once. Distant friends encounter a familiar face. I don't know what that means, but that silhouette looks like a mantis. I'm guessing that's a reference to the mantis race in FTL. I guess there's a mantis pilot that we can get. That will be fun. Challenge runs. Finish three corp islands without dropping below four grid power. Well, that's potentially doable on this mission, on this run. Uh, everything else would fail that on this run. Finish three corporate islands without powering a weapon modification. Finish three corporate islands and destroy every time pod discovered. Destroy every time pod discovered. Wow, that's gotta be time pods are great. They give you they give you weapons or pilots or or reactor pods. Wow. Why would you want to destroy them except for, except just to achieve this, to get this achievement? Well, I suppose you could be chronophobic and uh, have a fear of time travel. There is no strife. Finish three corporate islands without failing an objective. Well, that's going to just take time and skill and the right squad and a decent pasting of luck, I think. At least I'm not good enough yet not to need that decent, decent heap of luck. Finish three corporate islands without equipping any new pilots or weapons. So starting squad and starting weapons. That's probably going to need a better squad than we've seen. Meta game. Unlock a new mech squad. Well, we've done that. Friends in high places. Spend 50 rep across all games. That's a matter of time. Immovable objects. Block 100 vec across all games. Also probably a matter of time. Rescue 100,000 civilians. Ditto. Time. Perfect strategy, collect 10 perfect island rewards across all games. Well, that's time and good light needed for that. Victories, beat the game. Well, we've not done that yet. Beat the game on hard. I'm only playing on normal, so we're not going to do that. Beat the game at least once per length. So, with two, three, and four islands. The final victory becomes available as soon as you've finished two islands. So, okay, that's going to take several games. Beat the game with four different squads. Multiple games that don't win the game. Complete victory, beat the game with all 10 primary squads. Again, gotta unlock them all first. So most of these are gonna take a lot of play to unlock and we're not gonna see them at all in this let's play. This squad, however, the squad achievements, there are three 
available for this squad. One is chain attack. Have a chain whip attack. Cha have a chain whip attack. Chain through ten tiles. Now that's going to be lots of buildings and enemies bunched up. You know, if we get that situation, we can get that achievement. Otherwise, there's nothing really we can, not much we can do to manufacture a situation where that can occur. Finish the first two, first two corporate islands in under 30 minutes. That's. I guess they are called the Blitzkrieg Squad, so I can see why that achievement exists. But, I don't know, racing through this game is not. doesn't seem like the way I want to play it. Could certainly finish the islands there, but uh, probably not without taking a bunch of damage or making a bunch of terrible moves. Hold the line, block four emerging back in a single turn. Well, that's something we potentially could do. I thought. Oh, in a, in a single turn. No, right, that, that again will be situational. Can we use ourselves and our other vet to block the vet? And is that a better strategy than destroying it? Right now, that's a great strategy because it deals two damage if vet block other vet. So that might happen. Um, right. So that's the achievements we could do. So, blocking the vet, I can see potentially happening sometime during this run. Uh, getting a chain attack through 10 tiles? Probably unlikely. That's going to need a bunch of play until the situation arises. However, all that aside, we have no new reactor cores, so we've got no new upgrades to do. I don't really want to rearrange any of the power we've already got. It's all working out pretty nicely. So let's go try and defend the corporate HQ. Pinnacle Tower is under attack. My analysis processor is unable to identify the species of VEC threatening us. Caution is advised. Well, our objectives tell us it's a Scion Abomination, which is probably going to give other Scion a bunch of nasty perks, uh, and it's going to have a bunch of hit points. Um, most Scion are only two, so it's probably going to be four or five, maybe six. Most of the, most of the leaders are six, so it's probably six. And protect the corporate tower. Let's see what we're dealing with. So we have a scorpion, a centipede, and the scion abomination. It has three movement, it flies, it has five hit points, all other vet gain plus one HP, regeneration, and explode on death. Now that's really bad. It's buffing their health so they're harder to kill. It's giving them regeneration so that only hurting them is, is less effective. And they'll explode on death and damage things next to them. Hmm. As you see, three buff icons there. A heart for the regeneration. Oh, it's a bleeding heart. A green heart for the plus health and an explosion. So, I guess we need to deploy ourselves somewhere. If I sit here, there's a chance the Scorpion could come up and immobilize us, and I don't want that to happen. If I sit here, it can't reach us. So I'm going to start Zappy Kill here. I'm going to start Grapple Pie here, and Rockstar should hang around in this rank. Probably the uh, probably this side. Where it probably makes no difference. Let's see what the Vec wants to do. Max versus Vec. Okay, so we have a scorpion threatening to attack a single building. We have a centipede threatening it to attack a single building and us, but we can move out of the way. And the scion is just hanging around near us. Now, they didn't bunch up. Unfortunately, the centipede didn't want to sit there. Why not? It would have been so much nicer. Um... What can we do about this? Ideally, I'd want to kill the Scion this turn, if possible. But that's really going to be hard. We would need to deal five damage to it. We can lightning it for two, we can drop a rock on it for two. That does not add up to five. 
The only other way I can see, the only other sources of damage we could get is by pushing onto a spawn point, or pushing it into another enemy, or even our shield and mech perhaps. Um, or having it sit next to another exploding enemy. In addition, I mean, it would be nice if we could pull the centipede here so its attack would hit the Siren Abomination. That would be very nice indeed. But we can't sit there and pull because we're in the water. So the only way we could drop up here and pull the centipede into the water, that would, that would negate the centipede, you know, kill the centipede entirely. That's not a bad move. But it doesn't let us. That doesn't allow us to use the centipede against the scion. I assume if we pull them in the water, they don't explode because we're not hitting them with weapons. They just drown. That's probably what I'll do about the centipede. Now, scion abomination. I can electrify. No problem. Or I can electrify this one and drop a rock. I can drop a rock on one and electrify the other. Neither of them will die. That means we have a problem where the scorpion still attacks a building. Not sure I'm keen on that idea. What alternatives do I have? Uh, in, instead of using the grappling hook, I have the target of the strike, which can do one damage or can push things around. So if I drop it there, for example, it lines up all three enemies next to each other, so we electrify them all, but it doesn't nullify the attacks. So we still have one building here at risk, we still have one building here at risk. We would hit them all for two damage, so they'd be on two hit points, two hit points, three hit points. And then we could drop a rock on one of them. Well, then we could drop a rock, say, on the centipede, risk damage to the building, damage this for one, damage that for one. He's still alive, so that's no good. Uh, none of them are on forest, so there's no extra fire damage we're going to get. None of them are on ice. Well, none of them will be on ice. So there's no chance of blowing up the ice to drown them. That's the problem. I can't kill... I don't think I can kill a Scion this turn without leaving the others free to do their attacks. And I don't want to kill a Scorpion this turn because it will still risk the building next to it, as long as that Scion's there. And I can't kill... Well, I can kill the centipede. What can I do? What can I do about the scorpion? I could push it out of the way. If grapple pine moves here, it pulls the centipede into the water, then that means Rockstar would be able to reach this spot with three movement. Drop a rock on this tile, push the scorpion here so its attack hits the ice, saving the building. That's good. No damage to the scorpion, but saving the buildings is always a good choice. We still can electrify this guy for two to damage. Uh, you know, not not gonna make much difference. We could sit here and uh, use our shield. Oh, if, you're not, if we could sit there, our shield would absorb the acid, and the, these two would be acid, and that would be... and take two damage, well, one damage each other. Yeah, one damage. Um, but if they're acid, does that stop their attacks? I don't know what that does. That would be interesting, but I can't get there, because, unfortunately, these two are blocking our movement, and there's no diagonal movement. So that's an experiment we'll have to try some other time. So I'm looking at damage, kill, neutralize. And probably also... Well, I could stop a spawn. And that leaves us three enemies next turn instead of four. Probably a good thing. We'll still have a scorpion to deal with for whatever it's doing. We'll still have this abomination to kill. So only getting one extra enemy allows us to have three enemies for three attacks. I think that's the right move. And we'll still have our airstrike available for a subsequent turn. 
So let's do that. Splash. Push. And that, oh, that actually blocks off enemies from getting up there. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or a bad thing. And it also blocks our movement up there. But I, it'll help protect the corporate tower from things like scorpions, so you know, that's not bad. And let's Bethany use the shield to stop spawn and hurt that abomination. Not the best move, but everything's safe, so it's it's good enough. Damage dice. Locked, lost our shield. Messiah just moves about. Alright, what are they gonna do? He's just attacking the same spot. He's pinning us in place. Which I don't like. Righty ho. Now. We certainly uh, pull this scorpion out of the way. I don't need one damage. We can pull it out of the way to here. And that would free up our Mac. Alternatively, I could drop an airstrike here, which would turn that ice into water, which means it's much better pulling opportunities for Isabel for the rest of the game, because just yoink enemies that don't fly into the waters. Not this time, unfortunately, but any of these. And if we get things like scarabs or something that like to hang back, why not? That's That could be really useful. It would push the scorpion here. Which means then, if we're lightning them, we get both of them. Which is great, because the Scion will almost die. This guy will be half dead. Then this guy will actually attack the Scion and kill it for us. Brilliant. So he'll be uh, two-thirds dead at that point. That means we only need to deal with the Scorpion again. Now, he's being a nuisance. We can't kill him, as far as I can see. We can drop a rock at this exact same place. Push him here. Then our lightning attack will hit all three. That actually sounds... That sounds good. Push him back. Uh, it opens up that space, but that's fine. Use our airstrike. Oh, all our enemies are bunched up. How fun. Now, do I want to sit here and block again? I will take one damage. We don't have we don't have any objectives about not taking damage, so it's fine. So only do I want to risk the damage? It's two whole turns after this, so I think taking one damage at this point is acceptable for us to have fewer enemies to deal with. Because we're not the Scion will die this turn, but we'll still have these two left to clean up, plus two more spawns. So four enemies next turn to deal with is a better choice than five, and that seems like a good trade-off for one damage. So let's zap everybody. Oh, they're also on damaged ice. That would be, if I could get a second zap in, that would uh, drown both scorpions. But it gives options for drowning later on. Let's let's leave it at that. Scion will die. This ice will be turned into water. It's looking better. Oh, they've got regeneration. I forgot about that. But he doesn't. So now they've lost their regeneration. They've lost their explosion. We have a scarab and a horn to worry about. Okay. So the Scarab is sitting on thin ice, but he's too damaged anyway, so he dies easily. We could drop a rock on him and kill him and convert more ice to water. The Hornet flies, so water is not an issue for it. But it's attacking us, so if we move out of the way, we don't care about that attack. These two guys are on two health each and nicely bunched up, so if we can electrocute them, they both die. Now, the only thing I have to be cautious of is that Rockstar is not in the way when we electrocute them. So Rockstar, I was thinking Rockstar sit here and drop a rock on the Scarab, but that's a really bad idea because then we get electrocuted. Rockstar can't be sitting around this building because the, the lightning effect changes through buildings. Um, I, would, I was thinking of moving here to electrify them, but what if instead, if Isabel moves here, Isabel can, uh, can take the lightning damage without trouble or can move afterwards. Isabel can move there. 
No, we don't need to do that. Ganymede moves here, drops the rock on the Hornet, because we can. Zappy Kill moves over here, Lightning sees two and kills them, that's three dead. And that leaves this spot clear, so Isabel can move here, and yoink the Scarab into the water. That's killing all four enemies, that's... I see nothing whatsoever wrong with that plan. I'm sure there's something wrong with it. Now he's going to get pushed aside, and then we're just going to pull him back, so there's no problem. Okay, then more we guys. Lightning attack for the Scarabs. The building is going to take no damage, but they would, it would have changed this attack into, um, into Ganymede if it had been sitting next to any of these buildings or any of these enemies, or even... Yeah, so that would not be a good idea. Double kill. And more drowning. Hello. Goodbye. Two enemies next turn, and it'll be the final turn. That's that's better than I was hoping for. There's an alpha scorpion and a centipede. Well, the centipede is... Uh, Tempting us a lot. Tempting us to push it into the water. So, or to pull it rather. So I think that's what we're going to do. Alpha Scorpion. We can't pull it into water because we're going to get on the other side of the water. But if we move over here, throw a rock onto this tile, we'll then push it into the water. And drowning is the most effective way of killing high hit point enemies that don't fly. You said that last time, Isabel. So let's let's knock him in the water. Go for a swim. And Bethany, lightning has Bethany has nothing to do, so uh, I'll repair. Why not? Not that it matters. Final turn. There's no more Vec. We've done all our objectives. That's that's a perfect mission. Thousands of lives, well, 1,000, were saved today. I'm thankful for the time you have sacrificed to aid us. Two more rep, a bunch more XP. Everyone's getting pretty close to their top rank where they all unlock extra skills. Random skills, unfortunately, I think. I don't know, they might be preset, but they're probably random. We have seven rep to spend. Perfect island, which means we lost no civilians on this island, so we get a free reward. Your saved pinnacle accomplishing every objective without fail. Allow me to provide additional aid. Thank you. So, we can choose from a repair drop, any class weapon, heal, no power, heals all play units, including disabled mechs. Um, that might be nice, I'm not sure if we need it. We have another pilot. Silica requires two power. No skills. So the first rank, but almost hitting the second rank. Special ability. The special sorry, the special ability requires two power. The mech can act twice if it does not move. Well that's interesting. If you're in a good spot, if you're piloting uh, like the an artillery mech or something. Taking two actions could be a very useful thing. You get double attacks, or in, even in Chain of Lightning, get double attacks would be uh, could be really useful. Skills none. Alternatively, plus two power to get a good defense up by another four percent, um, bringing it to thirty-one percent chance of an, of buildings resisting damage. So far, we've managed to avoid most of the damage to buildings. In this game, we've only taken two damage to buildings so far. Now, obviously that's very likely to change in the future if I uh, mess up, as is pretty much guaranteed to happen. So, extra rear defense is going to help us in this game. Um, well, we can take one pilot through the next game. So, you know, it might be that pilot, but we don't know. At the moment, I'm happy with the pilots we have. I don't think... Bringing Silica in is going to be worthwhile. The repair drop, as a, as a kind of last ditch, if we killed someone, I mean, 
including disabled mechs is important things. That means, and it heals them all to full. So if we're really doing, taking a lot of, taking a lot of damage sometime, instead of one attack, if we can repair and bring back any dead mechs, you know, that could completely save our bacon in a really tough situation. We would need a, we would need a free slot to equip that in. I don't know if I have a free slot right now, so I'll, I'll come back to that in a second. In fact, let's check right now. Do we have a free slot? Sappy Kill has a free slot. Grapple Pie does not, and Rockstar does not. So that would take our last free weapon slot. Okay. Do I want that? Do I want that? Or do I want the Grim Defense? I think the Grim Defense is going to do us better overall. We're trying to avoid our mechs being killed, right? So heal it, or even taking too much damage. So healing them all we're probably not going to have a good opportunity to use it. So let's take the grid defense. That's probably the, the sanest choice here. Alright, now we have seven reputation to spend on this island. Our grid defense is now up to 31. We have seven reputation to spend and lots of things available to spend it on. So we could get two reactor cores. Um, buy extra defense or there's four items here to sell. Boosters, any class weapon, jump forward and push adjacent tiles away. Just a weapon, not a movement alternative, but it's a good teleport or sort of teleport. I don't know how far you jump forward. Presumably any distance? Maybe only two? I don't know. If it's only two, that's kind of ridiculously pointless because it's not going to happen much. The jumping forward two is going to be the right move. Um, there's a sail on the Vice Fist. That's a prime weapon. Well, now our prime is the lightning one, which has a free weapon slot. Grab a unit and toss it behind you. Uh, doing one damage to it in the process. So tossing it can get it out of the way of somewhere. It can move it into the way to attack another Vec. This deals damage. That's not bad. It does take power. Default free. Oh no, it doesn't take power, it's free. Ally immune. I don't know what that means. And this is all hover stuff, so I can't even hover over that to find out what it means, unless we buy it. Um, or there's a very, very expensive damage upgrade. Okay, we have a passive effect. Kick off boosters, mechs gain plus one move if they start their turn adjacent to each other. Also free. Uh, for any class. And that's passive, well that'll apply to everyone. The extra move never hurts, that's not a bad choice. Now the downside of the two rep ones, if we buy any of the, the ones that cost two rep, then we can't buy two reactor cores. And I'm pretty keen to buy two reactor cores so we can get some good upgrades. I'd probably rather have specific upgrades, like extra damage or whatever, than a passive effect for plus one movement some of the time. It would, it would be useful. Movement is, is often a limiting factor. Alternatively, smoke bombs, any class weapon, also free power initially, fly over the targets while dropping smoke. Now that has a range booster, so presumably that starts off only being able to go one step. This is interesting, we have uh, a jump, we have a flip your enemy over your head, we have a extra movement, and we have another jump at your back. So we've got like Two options here where our units can jump, one where we can throw an enemy. Um, and dropping smoke is great, because you drop smoke, it will nullify that unit's attack. It doesn't matter what that unit is or where it is, you drop smoke on it, it just won't be able to attack that turn. Now the problem is I don't know what the range is, and I don't know... If I pick something now, I don't think I can undo it, right? So, I don't know, can I pick one of these, drop it in a mech, test it out, undo and change my mind? I don't think so, I don't think I get the test options. I'll find out, but I'll have to pick what I think I'm going to do first. To find out. So, plus one defense, I don't think I need. I think I'd rather try out this, this extra weapon. Because it's cheap. And get two reactor cores. I don't see an undo here. And there's no test. 
So, continue. Well, we can come back here, but uh, can't, we can't click on any of that to do. So, no, we can't test out these weapons to find out how they function. Unfortunately, before before buying them. That's a slight pity. Obviously, we get a chance, once we've got them, we can test them out, you know, just to see what they're going to do. So, you know, come here. Hello! Goodbye! Um, and things like that. So how does this work? Uh, if there's someone in the way, you can't use it. Okay. Um, does that damage the ice? It does. What else? I want to see if there's if there's if there's an obstacle in the way. Uh, it sets things on fire. If there's an obstacle in the way. Again, can't use it. If there's a building in the way, you probably can. No, if there's a building in the way, you can't. Um, okay, so that's interesting. The upgrade deals no damage to allies, so that means you can flip your friends over your heads. Okay. Mm. Probably very situational. Plus two damage, nice, but very, very expensive. Um, so I'll keep that weapon equipped because it doesn't take any power, why not? So we have two reactor cores to spend. Who needs upgrades? What can we spend them on? We need three to get bonus damage on the lightning chain, which probably means turning off the building chain. So put two in here, turn that off and spend it on there. And that would be really useful. Alternatively, grappling hook an ally to shield them. Well, we very rare, we reasonably often actually have a free grappling move, but we probably don't generally want to grapple an ally with it. It wouldn't hurt, but it's not a priority in my in my head. Uh, here we go, we could get extra health now. There's been a couple of occasions where Ganymede has been at risk of death from... because of being in the way of an out, one of our electric attacks, so extra two extra health would definitely give us more flexibility that way, and also allow Ganymede to be able to tank some attacks here and there. Plus one move would also be really useful. I'm kind of inclined to buy both of those for Ganymede. The alternative is you could still spend them on Ganymede and get an extra damage for the rock for three. If I'm doing that, I'm more inclined to get extra damage for the lightning attack because the lightning attack tends to hit multiple enemies and doing three damage to each, to each of multiple enemies is probably generally more useful. But then three damage to a distant enemy is also useful. On the balance, I'd pr prefer to get the extra health and move just now than the damage. I don't know. It's it's that's defensive plus tactical. That's purely tactical, and that's offense. You know, killing enemies faster is always a good thing. No upgrades there. I want. Oh, it says power available. Um, no, we can turn that off. Could get extra health for Zappy Kill. I don't know that I need it yet. Zappy Kill has a shield already and three health. We're doing okay. I'd rather give both just now to uh, Rockstar. There's nothing else here that we can spend two reactor points on. I don't want to spend one on that. So let's go with Rockstar. Rock, like, you know, Zappy Kills had three upgrades already. Grapple Pies had two. Sorry, Zappy Kills had four. Grapple Pies had two. You've had one. So it's time, time for Rockstar to get, you know, a fair deal here. The choice is extra damage. Or the extra health and movement. We're going to start getting more uh, alpha enemies, I think, now as well. So maybe extra damage is the right choice. 
so hard to know. We're not very often constrained by Ganymede's movement. Sometimes, but less often than than with Isabel's grapple tank. We have been a couple of times constrained by health, but again, it's not very often, and usually there's a better option available. I think I think I'm gonna go for the damage. You know, things like uh, one hit kill scorpions. It's going to be a very nice thing to have. And one hit kill centipedes for that matter. There's enough three hit point enemies making the difference. Um, but the plus one damage is probably going to make the difference here. And um, with that, we're ready to leave this island and go on to whichever island is next. So. Now, we've secured two islands. We need to secure three before we're going to unlock this island. Whatever it is, the circuit board island. Um, which would mean going and tackling Archive next. The alternative is we could go for the final mission right now. Because you may complete the final mission at any point after securing two corporate islands. The difficulty of the mission scales to your current progress. It is called The Last Stand. It is the final mission. It is probably going to be hard. Uh, but I've never seen it before. So, the only question is, do I think I'm ready to tackle it now? Or do I think with extra upgrades and things, I'll be more ready to tackle it next time? It does say it scales, so... It's got volcanoes. It's got a bunch of vex spawning. It's a... Pr There's no buildings to defend. Now, that's a really interesting... Uh, situation. So, do you know? Do I try it, or do I keep keep uh, you know attacking attacking here? Oh well, I clicked it. My mistake. I guess we're I guess we're doing archive. I I, I thought it would uh, bring up a preview like uh, like the final mission did. Uh, but apparently it does not. So, Archive Inc. Head Office. We're doing all we can to protect the refugees, but we need your help against the Vec. We'll assist with some of our old Earth artifacts, if we can. Yeah, I can't... I can't go back. Oh well, I, we're, we're doing this island. So, we have two missions available. Hometown. We've recently got a few old Earth jets in the air. My people aren't the most skilled pilots yet, but they're getting the hang of it. So it has air support. A bomber will periodically target areas of the map, which kills everything in the area of targeting. Um, we had I had that in the previous game, and if I remember correctly, it's a three by three area that it targets and destroys everything in there. And scorpions in combination with that is really bad because uh, I got tied down in an air support area, and that really hurt. Um, I got out of the way, but it was, it was really frustrating. Kill at least seven enemies, and I'm protecting emergency batteries. The reward is one rep and one power. Now we don't, we're not desperately short on power. Power never hurts, it'll put our grid defense up. Um, and we might lose buildings, so we might need it, but right now... Excuse me, right now power is not the reward we need. The alternative, artifact bolts. Also kill at least seven enemies, protect the coal plant. Um... Lots of water to pull them into, which makes killing them easier. Although, it's got to be pulling sideways because these buildings are in the way of pulling them directly into it. So this is really, this, is really, this seems very much a layout for pushes, pushing enemies into the water rather than pulling them. We only have, we do have a push attack. Uh, we've actually got two with the, the single-use artillery there. But generally, pulling is easier for us than pushing. Um... Again, the, the, it's one rep and one power reward. Now, the difference is, Artifact Vault is going to unlock both these territories next. Hometown is going to unlock these two. What I'm seeing down here is a mission with a reactor core as a reward. Now, there's... Well, we get three, four missions before the Corporate HQ comes under attack. Uh, I think it's four. I might only, is it, I don't recall from last time. Um, if it's only three, then we have to do these three if I, if I want to have a chance of getting that reactor core. And I like reactor cores. 
you know, upgrades are never a bad thing. If it's four, maybe we can do this one as well, you know. But I'm gonna I'm gonna take artifact bolts now and try and work down to get this reactor core. The Vec retreats when the battle goes against them, then regroup and attack again somewhere else. Wipe them out for good this time. Well, I'm afraid they will still come to other territories, even if we wipe all of them out on this mission. But we'll try. So, oh, there's a brand new enemy I've never seen before. But, to begin with, we've got a Shell Scion, which gives all the Vec one power. I'm oh, sorry, one armor. Um, which is bad, because it makes them much harder to kill means they all our damage is reduced by one they're still easy enough to kill if we can pull them into water but you know when that opportunity doesn't arise it's worse we have the shell sign which we can kill easily of course and, and negate that ability and what is this it's an alpha leaper so firstly it's an alpha uh, it's only got three hit points which is quite surprising most alphas have uh, like four or five so it's pretty weak we could kill it in one hit with a rock if it wasn't armored what does it do uh, it moves four, webs its target like a scorpion, and then does five damage. Wow, that's pretty much an insta kill for anything. Although our lightning shield, our shield on our lightning mech would uh, stop that, but that's that's a prime target for destruction, regardless of whatever else is happening. Having a highly mobile enemy. Capable of doing four, uh, five damage. It's, it's moves it. It's, it's called a leaper too. So I'm wondering if it can actually move past blockages. If it can actually just jump anywhere. It seems, it seems likely. Um, though I can't tell for sure right now. Oh wait, that's highlighting its movement abilities. Yeah, I can't tell because there's no, there's no obstructions yet. So, what do I want to do? Now, most likely these fireflies are going to try and attack buildings, but maybe not. If they move on to any of these tiles, we have a chance to pull them into the water. I'm going to put a zappy kill here uh, for the best freedom to come around here, I think. The alternative would be here and come up behind them. Mm, not sure. Because what we, we can move through the water, so water does not obstruct us moving, so that's fine. We can probably move around as much as we need anyway. I'm gonna put grapple pie. Put grapple pie up here. We can pull enemies that this way, and we have lots of free movement right here. If I put there, we have to move all the way. Use our first turn moving basically here. If I start there, I've got full movement. I could actually get all the way down there if if it was useful. I don't think any enemies are gonna be on here this turn, but maybe subsequently they will. Um, I don't know, there's generally more space to move around here, but we can move through the water if need be. I think that's going to be more interesting. And Rockstar, again, should hang around up the back. Now, before I do that, I'm just going to select here again. Alpha Leaper, yeah, so Leaper can move, can jump over us, because this, this tile here is highlighted in green, indicating that it can actually move up there, even though we're blocking it. So Rockstar's job is to sit up the back somewhere and throw rocks, as usual. Let's see where the enemies move to. Wait a second, his movement is two, his movement is two, so neither of them are actually going to come up in there. Let's see what happens. There's a time pod coming in. Lovely. Leaper leaps. Oh, it's webbed us. All right. Now that leaper, it is not massive, so it does drown in water. So I think the very first thing we're going to do is pull it into the water. Its armor doesn't help it defend it in that situation. So uh, good luck there. Uh, if we move up here, pull it, it's drowned, and that's. That's our tough enemy attack solved for the moment. And that also means Happy Kill can move. The second problem is we have two attacks to deal with. We could just 
we can't sit there because we need to pull something in, so we can't just tank it. We have then two enemies with three health. We can drop a rock on one of them, either one, to kill it, thanks to our uh, upgraded rock accelerator. So just one of the others is a problem. Now, zapping them won't kill them. It'll bring it down to one health. So that means we probably need to tank. So I guess zappy kills... Oh wait, no, we won't kill either of them, because the scion will still be around. I just realized. Scion's not dead yet. Oh. Oh. Hmm. And because there's buildings in every single rank across the middle here, we can't just shunt them into the middle. This one could be pushed over here, in theory, and is attack negated. But apart from that, we're, uh, it's a difficult spot. This one could be pushed there, and it would hit the Scion, do one damage to it, take two damage from that, and die. So its attack would be negated, and it would die. So that's actually an effective kill, if we can shunt it there. question is... What do we do with the armor? We can only do two damage to it with the rock because of the armor. We're gonna kill the Alpha Leaper with Isabel. So Isabel's move is fixed. Oh wait, oh Isabel could do that. One damage to the Scion. Kill... and still kill the, the uh, Leaper. Okay. That means when that firefly number two down there, if we can drop a rock on this side of it, which we certainly can, you know, get there, push it on here, um, no, it won't take any damage from us, but we'll neutralize this attack, it will kill the Scion for us, so it won't be a problem next turn, and then it will take two damage, its armor will be gone and it will take two damage from the emerging deck, and we'll stop a spawn, that's, that's not bad, that'll be two enemies dead, and that still leaves us with Zappy Kill, to do something about this one, it'll be down to three health, our lightning will not unfortunately be also on three health. We also, though, have our new... I should remember this, we have our new Vice Fist. To, uh... Nice wrestling move, lift, lift an enemy up, flung him over our black back. Uh, so we can actually sit here, stop the second Vex spawning, and Vice Fist this Firefly right into the water. We can't get there right now, because the Leaper's in the way, but if the Leaper dead, it'll not be a problem. That would be four kills in one turn. No, three kills in one turn. This one would not be dead, but it would be wounded. That would be dead, that would be dead, that would be dead. And both spawns would be blocked. So we'd only have, we'd have one turn to clean up, to clear up this guy and collect the time pod. I think I like the sound of that. Um, the only other side is we might actually want to let one of these spawns happen. But the only way we can do that is drop a rock on this guy. Which means his attack isn't neutralized. So I think actually pushing him there is the best way to neutralize attack. Um, we could save the target as a strike for later, for, in case it's more useful later. And simply pull the leaper into the water. That's okay. That means the Shell Scion will not die. It'll only take one damage from the Firefly this turn. And the Firefly would still be blocking that. We'd still be blocking here, probably. Although I could, I could choose to move here and do a flip instead. Um, so 
So we'd have either two or three enemies to clean up next turn, which is a good situation to be in. One on one hit point, one on two hit points, they're basically guaranteed to be dead. And a time pot to collect. Victory in four turns, so there's only three more turns after this, so I'm actually willing to sacrifice my shield, I think. So why I'm why I'm thinking about not blocking one of these. If we block if we block these for one turn, that's great, we've got less enemies this turn. What it means is more are gonna spawn next turn. So then we have a bigger problem next turn. I, if we block one, we're only we're only procrastinating one extra enemy to deal with. And with these two dead, this one blocked, and this one these this one these two both injured on one hit point each. We should have a pretty easy time wiping out all three and probably collecting the time pot. So I think that's the way to go. Let's kill the Leaper. And... Let's kill the Firefly. And Bethany is saying not a pretty way to go, but twice in a row. Now that's, it's unfortunate they have the dialogue repeating twice in the same mission even. But, you know, whatever. And Ganymede can come up here. Throw a rock there. Put the Firefly out, out of the way. And... Oh. I meant not to block that one. Oh well. We'll see what we get. So it took, still took two damage. I thought it only took one. Um, there's four spawns coming up next turn. That's okay. That's that's acceptable. Two enemies to deal with and a time bomb to collect. Now we can lightning one of them. I can't. I can't flip either of them into the water. We can drop a rock on one. We can lightning the other. We don't have to actually pick up the time pod, but it's very likely to get trodden on by an enemy there and that would destroy it, so we probably want to pick it up if we can. We can't... I don't want to waste the airstrike just to do one hit point to the Scion here, I think. Can I pull any of these together in a useful fashion? I can't get down here to pull, and even if it, it, I could, it would pull the wrong one. I can't pull either of them into the water. He's flying, and there's no way to pull a five line into the water. So I do need to use Rockstar and Zappy Kill to get these kills, which means Grapple Pie. So Rockstar can't do either kill from this spot, and obviously Bethany and Zappy Kill can't either. So the only way to protect the time pod is if Isabel does, and that means we can't block another spawn this turn. So we'll have four new enemies next turn. Four is okay. We'll we'll be in a good in good shape and ready to see what happens next. So I'll put Bethany here and do the electric attack first. Now the reason I'm doing that is because then I can drop a rock here, um, which means Ganymede is going in in the rock stomach is going to be here, which is a better spot for whatever happens next turn. And I'm doing the mech first because otherwise I would electrify poor Ganymede to death, and you know, preferably avoid it. It also destroys the uh, armor, but with an attack of three hit points, thus the armor is not going to be a problem. And let's collect that time pod for the end of the mission. Now, the only other question, do I want to grapple myself to something or them to something? And the answer is no. We didn't get the ability to shield an ally with a grapple, otherwise that actually might be worth doing. Um, but it's not worth doing. We've killed four enemies, we have to kill three more. So two more alphas. Right, what do we got? We've got look at all look at all those threatened tiles. Now we've got two buildings under threat. Uh, so we'll come back to that. We have a leaper, 
Um, does three damage. An ordinary Leaper is really weak, but does three damage. So still a threat to worry about. And, but it's not attacking this turn, so we don't have to worry about it this turn. It couldn't get anywhere useful to attack. We have an Alpha Scarab, which is has a three attack, but you know it's in a prime position to be pulled into water right next to Grappify. Even if Grappify doesn't move, but Grappify could move to either of those two spots in uh, to do something. We have Zappy Kill. Uh, sorry, we have uh, Alpha Blobber with four hit points. The Blobber doesn't attack directly, but it throws. Uh, anywhere beside it, but it throws a blob that attacks and does three damage because it's an alpha um, to all the tiles around it. One hit point, easy to kill, but we can't let it explode. We have to kill it. So the question is oh, finally, we have a digger. The digger is attacking this tile and has put these rock walls around it, which is going to destroy next turn. It's not an attack we care about as long as we're not in the way. Well, it's not even an alpha. So it's not going to hurt uh, Isabel at all, even if we wanted to stay sitting there. So we don't care about that attack at all. Two hit points. One hit point. We can we can ignore these enemies if we want to. That leaves the Blob must kill. The Scarab should kill. The Blobber we would like to do something about. Maybe not kill, but at least injure. These two are next to each other, suitable for lightning, but no one else is just yet. Um, can't really chain this blob anywhere useful. Oh, here's a thought. What if I use the rock if I move move Ganymede away and move Zappy Kill away? Ganymede and Bethany are both out of the way. Then I drop a rock here, push the blob to this tile where Zappy Kill was sitting. What order are these attacks? Oh, the blob is last. So what would happen is the Scarab would actually kill the Blob for us. Alright, no big deal. Oh, we don't actually have to kill the Scarab for this turn. This attack is not a big deal. That's the only thing we must kill this turn. That's an interesting thing. So we could, we could push it there. Now, that I was thinking then it's a then it's three damage attack would actually hit the Alpha Blobber, which would be a very nice thing to have happen. But it's not going to happen. So instead, we're probably better off saving our rock for something else. If, if Rockstar moves out of the way, we can lightning this blob. Which I guess, if that's the only way to kill it, then so be it. No one is in a position to be uh, tossed over Zappa Kills back into the water, unfortunately. Uh, that's an attack worth three. Zappa Kill could move here. Toss the Alpha Scarab over here, do one damage to it, and it will kill the Leaper for us. So that's one attack we don't need to do. But that means we're not using a lightning attack. And unfortunately, it doesn't give us an option to do anything about the Alpha Blobber. Rockstar could move, say, here. Drop a rock there. Which would push the Alpha Scarab here, which means the Alpha Scarab would do three damage to... Um, the Alpha Blobber. Which is nice. Using enemies to damage enemies. Uh, and then if we also used our lightning attack on these two, that would kill the Leaper. The combination of the lightning and the Scarab would also kill the Alpha Blobber so we don't have a problem with them next turn. That leaves us with the Blob and next turn the Digger and whatever pops up. How do we kill the Blob? If we use the Rock to push the Scarab, we need to kill the blob somehow, and that we can't pull it into the water, so that would require us to use our airstrike on it. It's okay, but the airstrike, I don't know. Huh. Here's the thing. Let's look at another option. Let's say I drop the rock on the digger, which would kill it. I can I can do the test move and undo the move. I drop the rock onto the digger, it would kill it. It would push one of its rock walls into the Alpha Blobber, doing two damage to it, and now Lightning would kill the Alpha Blobber. So it's the rock and the digger would kill the Blobber, the Lightning... Sorry, the digger and the Lightning would kill the Blobber. 
The lightning will kill the leaper. Diggle would be dead. That's three enemies dead. We don't care about the scarab because we don't have three units away. And we can throw the airstrike onto the blob. Or potentially even just... No, we can't really pull the blob anywhere out of the way. But we can throw the airstrike on the blob and, and problem solved. That's good. Kill three enemies. Kill three enemies. Have an alpha scarab and two new things to deal with next turn. Or I can actually move there and do the lightning. So we've only got one new thing to deal with next turn. Which is one I'm, I'm happy to take damage at this point. Move here for the lightning. Well, let's just, let's just double check. That means Grapple Pie can move anywhere convenient. Uh, probably once the digger's dead, because then there'll be more space, because this will all be destroyed. Well, that will still be there. Move anywhere convenient. Um, and drop an airstrike. On the Alpha Blob. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. This is a good plan. Okay, one down. Two more down. Oh, and uh, three points away from from leveling up, and four points away from leveling up here. Uh, Grapple Pie, where should we sit? Well, if the forests are on fire, we don't want to be on the forests, but somewhere in between to get in the way to obstruct enemy movement is probably a good thing. And let's destroy that blob before it hurts us. Great! More fire! And another Scarab. Alpha Scarab wants to hit that building, Scarab wants to hit us. So, can we kill the Alpha Scarab? It would take two attacks to do so. Can we kill that one? One drop of rock on it and it will kill it. Can we pull the Alpha Scarab anywhere useful? We absolutely can. Let's kill two beetles with one stone. Look out below. Ganymede is a credit to Blitzkrieg. And now we have Zappy Kill with nothing to do, so... But yeah, how was that? I hope that was fun. Success! I'm definitely having so much more success with this squad than I did with the previous one. Previous game I had, I think, two missions where I protected all the buildings? Not very many anyway. I was constantly fighting a losing battle, losing buildings, gaining power back, losing power, and eventually we, we lost the game by running out of power. And this time, you know, we're keeping it up and even getting boosts to our grid defense. So that effect won't be causing any trouble anymore. We got one rep, we got one power, and we got a time pod. And we just got a promotion. So uh, Ganymede is going to have a brand new skill, so we'll find out what that is in a minute. First, we're going to open the time pod, which has... A pilot, I guess? And a reactor core. Prospero. He has a special ability, which requires one power. The mech gains flying. Now that doesn't that doesn't mean we can move past buildings because we can't actually leap over them, but it does mean we can hover above water uh, or bottomless chasms, anything like that. Um, that's nice. Plus two mech hit points, and a little bit more than halfway towards the final skill. So extra hit points, the ability to fly. Those are both lovely abilities to have. Continue. Uh, Ganymede got promoted and has plus two hit points on the mech as well, which is uh, great because Ganymede was Ganymede's mech was on two hit points and now is on four without us even spending that upgrade. We got the damage upgrade instead, so that's that's very nice of Ganymede. So we have a reactor core. I'm not sure we want to spend it yet. We have a new pilot. I'm not sure if I even want a pilot yet. I could get flying 
and extra health for uh, Isabel. Already great on health, but that would actually mean we could then spend this point elsewhere if I wanted. Like on the shield ally, which might occasionally be useful. Um, the extra reactor we're using here with Bethany, so swapping Bethany out for Prospero. Well, that, Zapikil will get the most benefit from flying because Zapikil tends to be in and around the enemies the most, and being able to sit above some water could be the difference between a successful attack or not. Sitting in the water means we can't attack at all, so. Um, we could then make Bethany pilot something else, which could be good, but without this power, we would have to spend our one reactor core now to get the building chain again, and we'd probably want to do that. On the other hand, that means we'd get the bonus health instead of the bonus shield. Uh, thank two plus, plus two health from his skill rather than uh, the shield from her skill. There's a thought. So what if Bethany was pi piloting Grapple Pi? Grapple Pi would start with a shield and armor uh, and plus two, uh, uh, sorry, what's her other ability? Plus one reactor. Uh, so we would be able to unlock that. There's no higher power abilities to unlock at the moment. What if we put Bethany in charge of Rockstar? We gain a shield as well as four health. That's good, but you know, being way out the back. Sorry, we'd have two health. Sorry, shield and two health. Being way out the back doesn't matter much. Uh, we would have an extra power to spend on the movement. Not bad. We would lose good defense. We would lose the extra health. Prospero is not going to level up anymore, so. If we don't like the skills, particularly, then uh, it seems reasonable to swap around. A shield or two extra health. Now, shield, the shield is actually brilliant, generally, because it doesn't matter if an attack does five damage or something, the shield will just stop it for a turn. Whereas health is health. If an attack does five damage, we have to have more than five health to survive it. But flying is going to make the most sense for Zappy Gill, and it sounds like a really good ability to have. Before I decide, let's just check what the terrain looks like that we might be about to go for. And so, as I said, I'm going to go for Archivist Hall and then whatever this territory is. So before I make a decision, let's see what the terrain is going to look like. Let's see what this mission is to decide if we need flying this time or not. So Archivist Hall, we were conducting excavations in this region when the VEC came using old earth proximity mines. You may be able to use them against the VEC. Uh, so proximity mines, if I remember correctly, explode on the tile on only. I don't think they, I don't know how much damage they do, maybe one or two. I don't think they damage adjacent tiles at all. They might push adjacent tiles. We'll have to find out. Um, goals are block vex spawning three times. There's a lot of them on the first turn that you can't block, of course. Um, protect the power generator and obviously all the buildings. Hopefully they kill themselves mostly on the mines, but um, that looks doable. There's a bunch of water. Uh, and in fact, if the, most of the vec are not flying, then they're likely to bunch up around the water because there's with the mines and the water, there's not that much maneuverability there. So that suggests flying to be able to do electrify, electric attacks could be really useful there. Probably the rock, rock star would be hanging around up the back here. And that would leave Isabel probably to run hopefully run around here and pull things into mines i don't know or into what maybe maybe hang around here and pull things into water because this this piece of water is nice you've got uh four tiles you've got two tiles two ways to pull to pull all around it lots lots of lots of ability to drown things in that water and to be honest isabel around hanging around here isabel's the best one at blocking spawning as well because she has armor well the, the rock star uh, tank itself has armor. It's not Ganymede's armor. Right, so let's let's get the flying ability. Let's take Bethany out of Zafikil. 
Um, it requires Reactor Power to activate a special ability. Oh. I forgot about that. So we lost... Bethany had bonus power, so we've lost Building Chain. We could spend... We can install another Reactor Core and spend it on Flying. Let's take another look here. The buildings are around the edges, so we probably don't need... We probably don't really need the building chain this turn. We're gonna hope to chain through enemies, or we probably won't end up with chain abilities. So that's fine. I can I can sacrifice building chain this turn to get flying. Let's try it out. I can fly! Yay, I can sit above water and fling my enemies over it. Now flinging a flying enemy into water obviously it stays flying. It just bounces, bounces the tile underneath it. Great! And yeah, flying doesn't help us with buildings or mountains because they're too tall. You need some kind of jump ability or teleport or something for that. Done testing! Right, that's Zappy Kill. Uh, grapple Pie is staying the same. And Rockstar. Hmm. Yeah. Rockstar. Femini's going to take over Rockstar from Genemy. Thanks, Mac and Genemy. You've done a great job. Um, but we're going to try and get Bethany leveled up here. And we have a bonus power to spend on health or movement. Without building chain, I don't think health is much of a threat. So let's get the movement. Nah, I'll probably regret that. But we'll find out. Let's go to Archive Assault. And see what these five heck want to do. Oh dear, that's a bunch of nasty ones. So we have an Alpha Blobber. It's going to throw blobs around and be a nuisance. We have an Alpha Leaper. Thankfully weak, but it's probably going to get in our in our way. We have a Shell Scion, giving all the rest of them uh, armor. So that needs to die before we're going to be effective killing any others. And two Scarabs, which are going to launch ranged attacks. This is... This is a very difficult starting set of enemies. We don't have a lot of movement. What with all these mines? We can move past the mines. Uh, oh, mines. Any unit that stops on the space will trigger the mine and be killed. Okay, the mines are insta-kill. That's, that's nice. That's better than uh, merely doing damage. So if any enemies happen to trip on them, then we laugh. Uh, I don't know how likely that is. Uh, so, now Zappy Kill needs to move around this area. Isabel needs to move around this area. Uh, in. I don't even remember what the uh, tank is called. Um, and I want Rockstar to move around that area. We can move through each other. We've got four movement with each of them. If we start with, if we start with uh, Grapple Pie here, one, two, three, four, well, we obviously don't want to go there, but, um, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, yeah. If Grapple Pie has the front spot, then her movement is going to be more able to get her to the edges of this lake, to pull things into this lake. That's a, it's a very nice looking lake. Of course, pulling things into mines would also be an option to keep in, to bear in mind. Things like the Alpha Blobber and uh, Alpha Leaper would be good targets to pull into mines. Um, but there'll be fewer opportunities for that. Stick Zappy Kill right behind, and we'll stick Rockstar up in this corner. And, what, and see what these five enemies are going to do. It'll be six in a moment with a blob. Leap. Oh, and we're webbed. Ouch. Uh, well, the blob killed itself. Okay, so we're under attack and we're pinned, and it's threatening to do four damage to us. Well, five, but thanks to our shield, it'll only be four. So we'll only be mostly dead. Not quite all dead. 
we have two different scarabs attacking the same pair of buildings. So that's a threat to two buildings. And the blobs, the blobless blob did nothing. So what can we do here? Um, Grapple Pie is in a bit of a pickle. Zappy Kill Flying can actually come here. Well, unfortunately, we can't zap through buildings anymore, but we can zap both of these and it would kill both. So far, so good. That would be two enemies dead. I'm just thinking Grapple Pie could actually. We could use this on the first turn and drop it here. That would push both the enemies onto mines, killing them instantly. That'll be four out of the five enemies dead. Um, we can drop a rock on top of... Well, we can actually drop, push this one onto that mine, but I might, might want to keep the mine. We can drop a rock onto the blobber. No, why would I... Why do I want to save an enemy for next turn? Why do I want to save a mine for next turn? We can kill all four enemies. I should kill all, all four enemies. That's the only thing that makes sense here. The, the option is, if I want to save my airstrike, we can't kill this one. We can only kill that one. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna airstrike. Use it when it's useful, when it's especially useful, rather than just marginally useful. And the two, two kills is especially useful. And what are these mines for except Killing deck. So as much as I don't really want to be up this side because it makes it harder to get anywhere else next turn, we still have four movement, and you know, and that gives us one, two, three, four. We still get back there next turn. We just can't get any further over this side, and we actually have the ability to come down here if it's useful as well. So I will sit. If I sit here, we give up that file. We we'll get that one. It doesn't matter. Let's throw a rock here and kill the second. Uh, and leveled up. So Bethany got plus three grid defense. Nothing to sneeze at, but I was hoping for uh, like extra health or extra movement or something even more exciting, but never mind. And hey, we can fly, we should we should fly. Uh, oh well it didn't kill the scarab because of the armor. I failed to account for that, unfortunately. But thankfully it was sitting on fire and caught fire, so once again, uh, uh, I, I lucked out rather than uh, winning thanks to Bethesda's strategy. It'll be dead, we're going to have one vec to deal with and three units to do it with next turn, so uh, poor thing is going to be pretty outnumbered. It is an alpha, five hit points, but it's not even moving. Alright, I forgot our bonus objective is block the X spawning three times, so we should probably start doing that, right? There are three spawns. Bethany could throw a rock onto one of them. That would block one. Zappy Kill could go sit on one to block another. Probably this one rather than sitting in the fire. And that leaves Grapple Pie to go and pull this alpha into the water. That's, that's lovely. Zappy Kill... Let me just do a test movement. If I drop a rock here, the mine doesn't get pushed. Okay, that's great. Let's drop a rock there and stop one spawn. Let's go stand there to stop another spawn. And pull this Alpha Firefly into the water and watch it drown. So we'll have one new Vec next turn. And next turn we'll have another spawn option to block another spawn to get our bonus objective. This is going a lot easier than I expected. And it's pretty much all thanks to those mines, which gave us uh, three kills last turn. The Leaper, and is it on fire right away? It is on fire right away. It's got one hit point. It's going to die. E even if we don't do anything, it's going to die. Um, I might want to do something, though, because right now we're pinned down, and I can actually put Isabel safely on any spot to to block it off without her even taking damage. And I probably want to because we need to block at least one more and there's four new spots coming up. I don't want to have five, four or five enemies to deal with on the final turn. So how do I kill... Uh, I can't... Oh, I can't drop a rock. I can move here, but I can't fire a rock from there. I 
Okay. I could go here and drop a rock on this spot, which would push Isabel into the water, which would break the web, and then Isabel has a free action. That's going to die anyway to due to fire, and it's going to attack into space. I don't really care about it. Let's restrict enemy movement and come and sit on. Yeah, let's say that. Let's say this. Let's stay near the lake, which we, which we can pull things into. So we'll block two more enemies. We'll have three to deal with. They'll burn to death, and it's will be the final turn. Hmm. Can we grapple a rock? We can actually grapple rocks around. That's an interesting idea. Now I don't want to drop it in the water, so I'm not going to do it. But um, that's a good good thing to bear in mind for later. We can't grapple mines, unfortunately. Uh, Although, again, from this spot I wouldn't want to, but... We have no use for the zap. We have no use for the grapple this turn. We don't even have a use for the airstrike this turn. No, we used it up anyway. Final turn! One dead leaper. Two blocked enemies. And we have a digger, a firefly, and an alpha firefly on fire. Uh, well, an alpha firefly... Well, we have a digger! We have one digger to deal with. Uh, with two hit points. I think he's going to get a rock thrown on him and nothing else worth noting is going to happen. They're making it too easy. They're just making it much too easy. Uh, nothing else to be done. We did take a little bit of damage here. Um, we did take a little bit of damage there. I don't remember how. So, you know, whatever. It's meaningless, but I like repairing them. Um, it feels like the right thing to do, even though they get fully repaired between missions anyway. So that's probably the easiest mission I've had this entire game. That's That was a surprise. And we got another rep. We got another boost to our good defense. With the Vec trapped underground, our old Earth relics on the surface are safe, and the people as well. Thank you, Blitzkrieg. We saved all the civilians. Bethany got promoted to max. Uh, Prospero's leveling up. And Isabel's Ulmer got 12 XP and is just on the edge of leveling up as well. We didn't get any reactor cores yet, but that's where we're going to Old Earth Park to find reactor cores. Unfortunately, it's again been uh, a bit over an hour, so I'm going to leave it here and tackle Old Earth Park in the next episode. I'm not even going to take a sneak peek right now to find out what it looks like. We'll save that for next time. So thanks very much for watching and I will be streaming again on Sunday or Monday. I'm not sure if it's going to happen on Sunday. Other stuff might happen but if it's not happening Sunday it will happen Monday. Um, these episodes are going up on YouTube over the next several days. Um, so if you're watching on YouTube you've got more to look forward to shortly after this. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time you're here.